I just wanted to take an opportunity uh, to say a few things. The first thing is simply, what is this all about? What is the treaty all about? And why is it needed? And it's needed to deal with the major challenges of the 21st century. And those are globalization, climate change, energy, security, cross-border crime. And the fact of the matter is we can't do it alone. Therefore, in very practical terms, what does the treaty do for us uh, most particularly? And I think it's important in Donegal to say this. It endorses the core values of a social market economy, full employment and social progress. It also provides for a more efficient and more effective EU, a greater role for our national parliament, more responsibility for our European Parliament and our parliamentarians have been elected just recently. And it also provides for the first time an EU-wide citizens initiative. We'll also see the appointment of a full-time president of uh, the European Commission and a new High Commissioner for Foreign and Security Policy. I think it's also important to get a few facts out there. We will retain a commissioner and only a yes vote will retain a commissioner. We also have legal guarantees that protect in our constitution issues such as the right to life, education, and the family. We also have a legal guarantee that Lisbon changes nothing in the area of taxation. And we also have a legal guarantee that Ireland's traditional policy of military neutrality will not be affected. So therefore, the government has a basis, in my view, to go back to the people in this referendum after listening to many of the concerns that they expressed to us as elected representatives and again go to them and ask for their approval for the ratification of a treaty. As Minister for Enterprise, Trade and Employment, I also want to say that Lisbon is good for business. It our position within the EU has enhanced our attractiveness as a good place to invest and to do business. And this was reiterated this weekend at the Global Forum, when many of the CEOs, particularly the American CEOs, felt that our position and our role and our respect within the European Union was one of the reasons that attracted them to invest in Ireland. And put very simply, they want to know, are we in or are we out? And as you heard uh, this morning, the majority of the CEOs presently based here in Ireland have indicated that yes is the most important thing and they most particularly support the yes campaign. And it also means that the effective rate of corporation tax, which is very, very competitive and very attractive for our FDI clients, will in fact be guaranteed as a consequence of the legal guarantees that have been given on our taxation policy. We're also saying that Lisbon is good for investment. We have unhindered access to the European single market, which is very, very important and crucial for our indigenous industries. We have invested uh, from an EU investment perspective in our physical infrastructure and human resources. And to date, it's important to reiterate that 17 billion euro has been spent in structural and cohesion funds. And in my view, Ireland's enterprises and business will gain from a strengthened European Union position. It's also very important to say that Lisbon is good for workers. And I just want to reiterate a few facts once again about the issue. Lisbon endorses EU employment, social and equality policies. And I very much welcome what Congress has had to say in the support of the affirmations that have been given within Lisbon. It also, through the Charter of Fundamental Rights, explicitly and legally for the first time, gives additional protection to our workers. And there's another social objective which I think hasn't been heard within the context of the debate thus far, and that is that the social clause within Lisbon says, and I quote, it is for the promotion of a high level of employment, adequate social protection, and to fight against social exclusion. So if there were fundamental values that workers wish to abide by, then they're certainly within the context of uh, the Lisbon agenda. And then finally to say, and reiterate, because this has been raised by a number of people, in the context of the minimum wage, the minimum wage 
is set by the Irish government. It is considered by the Labour Court. It is recommended to the Minister for Enterprise, Trade and Employment. And to reiterate and deal with the issue once again, that the minimum wage cannot be affected by the European Union. It is a national competence. So I just wanted to outline very simply some of the key positives, the facts of the situation with regard to Lisbon. We're here as uh, Fianna Fáil people, encouraging our own people certainly to support Lisbon, but re-echoing the message and the necessity of a resounding yes. We are out campaigning uh, to ensure that uh, as many people as possible firstly vote on the 2nd of October and most importantly that, that we have a resounding yes here in the North West.